Well, there's no doubt. You, you know, uh, just before I went to Latin America, it was 60s, 80s, 60s, 90s. I mean, the whole social environment in Europe was a one uh, of uh, socialism, communism, uh, communist parties in Italy and France were extremely strong, and there was a, a real, a real possibility that Western Europe would become communistic through a democratic way. Now, uh, when I arrived in, in Chile, it was just before the election, uh, presidential election, where Allende finally won. He won with this very, very small uh, vote. He had 37% of the votes, and those 37% of the votes were being split up in seven different parties. So there was really not one party behind. It was La Unidad Popular that was uh, half winning this election. But um, this, of course, had an, a major impact in the political environment. First of all, Europe was very much in favor of this uh, first step to communism through a democratic process. And therefore, uh, all of the European media were extremely favorable to this uh, change over there. And I would say they were so favorable that perhaps they did not paint the right picture when they reported about what was really going on in, in, in Chile, which turned out to become a major economic mess with uh, Within a very short period, there was nothing to eat. People had to queue up for 48 hours in order to get half a liter of oil. Supermarkets were completely empty. And nationalization was going on in, an, in a very, very uh, strong manner, just because uh, factories were not able to run anymore because they were running out of raw materials. Uh, being, at the one hand, a national sales manager, as I started down there, and being responsible the interaction with the trade when there is such a shortage uh, puts quite an, an, an impressive burden on yourself because you had to assure that the few products that we had would be distributed in an equal manner because if you would favor somebody, you might very easily become a reason for nationalization. Uh, I moved very rapidly forward from there to become the marketing manager and that helped me then to be a member of the management board and with that again I had to start to negotiate with government about prices, raw material. We had to negotiate with the labor unions inside which were politically of course organized and things like this. So in these three years I got what I would say a basic, a basic social, political and economic uh, training on all aspects, uh, which later on, unfortunately or fortunately, uh, helped me quite a lot in many other situations, and uh, I still think helped me today, as uh, state intervention is becoming again uh, an aspect that is more growing than becoming less. Take Venezuela. I mean, we have become nationalized in Venezuela, big part of our business uh, in the 70s, uh, 1976, 1977, I had then the, uh, the task to negotiate uh, this nationalization uh, in the 80s, uh, finally achieved it in 86, so almost 10 years that Nestle was, uh, was negotiating its, negoti uh, its nationalization. And again, this experience, the first experience back in, in from Chile helped me also in this situation. And um, perhaps it was a reason that when Mr. Chavez uh, said uh, some time ago that uh, he would nationalize Nestle. Well, I responded with a small smile saying, well, of course, this is his privilege. That's a privilege uh, of, of a politician uh, to decide whether he wants to nationalize or not nationalize. The only important thing in such a case is that he recognizes the value of your investment. You have done it, I'm sure, and I said very clearly, I'm sure he would recognize it and would pay an indemnization that corresponds to our investment that we have made. And I think that's very important. Uh, I think as a company, we have to recognize that uh, politicians have the right to nationalize. But this right, in order to be respected, has to be linked to the adequate indemnization that the investors receive who has made the initial investment in this country. 
a lot of learning from that time, uh, learning that we also brought in from the time we were nationalized in Cuba, for example, where, uh, again, uh, we were happy enough uh, to negotiate uh, at that time uh, with the Cuban government and we received uh, a payment for indemnization. It took a long time because uh, there was not payment in, in, in money, it was payment in sugar. But we received uh, a, an adequate uh, indemnization for the nationalized uh, business. And today we have uh, three factories running in Cuba and uh, we are back again. So that's life and this is how politics and uh, change sometimes and once you are invited and sometimes uh, they prefer to see you outside. Let me, let me just mention that, for example, when we reinvested in Venezuela, uh, before we did that, especially in the milk sector, which was the one where we have been nationalized, I went and visited the ex-presidents who were the responsibles at that time for the first nationalization that we had. And I asked personally each one whether they would agree that we would reinvest in the sector and whether they had changed their mind. And uh, I received the very positive answer from all of them involved, three presidents, the acting president, but the two former presidents, that uh, they would see an engagement of Nestle as a positive thing for their country and for the, the local community. That's why we did it. Yes, I think, uh, of course, we, we, we are asking ourselves, we are listening very carefully what politicians have to, uh, to say. We read very carefully the political program of a presidential candidate in order to, dis to, to decipher uh, what their action will be. And of course, it plays a major role whether you make a new investment or you don't. You also look at uh, the legislation. Take, for example, Ethiopia. Ethiopia some years ago didn't have a specific uh, legislation for a foreign direct investment. Today there is one. And I think it's article number 47 who clearly states that in case of nationalization, the Ethiopian government commits itself to, to, to pay the indemnization in case they want to nationalize. Now, such a piece of uh, legislative framework, of course, is more helpful if you have to make uh, a direct investment.